I want to talk about framing specifically in um, Belfast because what I'm seeing when I watch the film is that a real there's there's a real appreciation and respect almost for wide angles in Belfast. You use them a lot, and they always always are purposeful. And I think that's it's just such a great. It isn't just done to to look great. It isn't just done to create symmetry in a way. It's done every every inch of that frame is being used for storytelling. And I found that really interesting. So I just I want to just kind of talk to you about your framing choices in Belfast, what it meant to the story and, and how you achieved that. On a studio film, we feel a certain responsibility to have a bit more coverage, even though we might have a very clear concept of what we'd like to do. There's a certain kind of responsibility that there might be some editing involved in, in the story and the pace, etc. With Belfast, we felt that we didn't really need to kind of have this, that we could create a, a story exactly the way we wanted to tell it. So we had many, many, many COVID restrictions as well. We shot for five weeks. Um, I usually have two, two cameras and uh, two operators so that I'm just managing, um, you know, I'll go set up a shot, but I'll let someone else operate. You know, I had to operate myself on Belfast. Mm. Um, so, Did you enjoy that? Uh, Do you like operating? I, I love operating it, uh, you know, you almost, as a cinematographer, you have to give up the thing you love the most, which is operating, um, so that you can actually do your job properly and, 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 and manage more than one camera. If it is one camera, I think it is, it is generally easier to be the cinematographer and the operator. But I find that uh, I cannot keep my eye on everything if there's more than one camera and I'm operating one. So that decision is made by myself uh, automatically. Um, but it came, it came from a place where we didn't want to also uh, pan or tilt. So if you've got to set up a scene that works for an entire sequence with all the actors moving back and forth, and you don't want to pan or tilt, then you have to leave enough negative space for all the action to happen. Uh, Why didn't you, you want to pan or tilt? What was the what was the reason for that? I wanted to concentrate on the performances. I didn't. I, I felt that that might uh, I'd be putting too much of myself into the. Uh, frame at that point that the um, uh, at that point that that might be a distraction. I knew that the script was incredible. That every word meant something. That every emotion meant something. The rehearsals with these just the finest of fine actors was something really special. And I just I felt like m my feeling when we rehearsed was I just want to sit and listen and and look. And, and I felt that that I had to find an angle that did the same thing, and so did Ken. Um, uh, but then again, I don't think you could sustain a whole film that way. There's a, you know, it gets really kinetic. You know, there's handheld, there's Steadicam, there's circular tracks, there's um, there's. People think it's a really still film, but it actually moves a lot. Um, it, it's just when it goes still, it really goes still. Um, I think and, and I, I think because of the movement is how is why people even think that it is a still film because you, you when you get those still shots it's really impactful. Ken was masterful. I mean, as you just found the balance with Ken that was just so uh, uh, wonderful. Um, uh, every shot to shot kind of transition uh, is kind of informative emotionally. And I think that's, you know, it, everything is emotionally informative. It's not about, there's no exposition. Exposition is, it, it, it just takes you out the story. I think a lot of those wide shots we're talking about, um, at least the ones that I remember most clearly and that had an effect on me, was when you had three people in the frame. Uh, you had someone on the left, right in the center, and on the right, and you kind of, you always know where to look because the the acting just it's very clear who was supposed to be paying attention to. But I I liked the way that you 
kind of made these small homes in narrow, narrow walkways and everything feel purposeful. Uh, every everybody felt like they knew where they were and they knew where they can be and they they had a comfort roaming around in their space. Um, and I, where where the scenes were that didn't have three people, you had kind of a big swath of negative space, like two people sitting on a couch with absolutely nothing in the middle, for instance, or you know people two people in different windows. Um, you always kind of want to look around the frame and find people, and I, I think that. A lot of films that just rely on really shallow depth of field, and believe me, I do that all the time, um, especially if I'm in environments that don't look very well and I just need to blur out the background. Uh, a lot of what you see in Belfast is in focus, wide, and it's almost like you can't hide. Like everything is there to be absorbed by the viewer. I think that's just, it's a really, um, I don't know, it's kind of a bold choice. It's almost a, it's almost a little bit scary putting that much out there because the viewer can be distracted by anything but they 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 aren't and and that's how that's the way stills great the great magnum photographers all work that way and um you know particular for the time of belfast um uh you know philip griffith jones a great welsh uh magnum photographer and president of magnum for 10 years he took amazing stills of the time and what he did was he juxtaposed civilian life with military life just within one frame you saw more than one story going on at all time and so we really felt that it would be something like a a, a life magazine spread where you um you know it's it, the, the photos so so that's another thing i think that's interesting about the black and white choices there, there's many black and white movies out there you have to i don't think they're all the same because there are so many different types of black and white you have to choose the one that fits your yeah. story and um I, I i love kind of doing two things at the same time often or more than that within a frame so you could take naturalistic lighting we basically didn't use it was all natural light um there were some practicals and there was some film lights on the uh, in the bus and in the cinema and in the uh, uh, theater, but everything else was pretty much natural light and practical lighting. But we gave tone and contrast by the placement and also through the grade. So we went for a slightly more contrasty grade. Now, now that is something that you know. I mean, I, I, I. Started in a dark room when I was about eleven, and and worked on my own prints uh, all through my teenage life. You know, you could add a kind of gloss and contrast to a an image you took that was with available light and not film lit, and that that gives something that I find you know. L Going to a photo exhibition and seeing a great print, it's not the same thing as, you know, you know, there are different types of book prints. There are different types of photo prints, the paper, the chemicals, everything. They make the experience different. And to me, the idea of taking something very natural and and then being very meticulous, again, about where the blackest black is, where the whitest white is, where the greys are in between, and all the nuances of that make something really feel kind of like it can be looked at for a long time, and that you can get something uh, by slowly roaming. I also think the idea of negative space is that the human eye never sees something like a close-up or a zoom in there's all this peripheral stuff that happens it's just your mind that takes you where you want to go so uh, i i think by framing this way we, we let the audience's kind of own imagination and mind take them where they wanted to go what did you film belfast on uh an alexa mini lf with my um beloved uh 65 mil lenses uh uh the Alexa Mini LF is kind of a medium format digital camera, and that's, I haven't shot a lot of digital films. Uh, I think I've only shot four, so uh, I still shoot analog film. It's, I'm lucky enough to, I enjoy the process, um, but uh, this seemed to be better suited to uh, the LF for many reasons. But there was something about those lenses that uh, would allow me to be kind of 185. Again, something I don't think I've shot 185 since 
2001. Um, so that was interesting to just give that space. And, um, and, and, and one of the reasons was I just, you know, if that's the size of the sensor, it's, it's a bit more squarish than 185, but I just wanted to use the whole set. Why would you, you know, when I, when I frame up on a stills camera, I don't kind of crop it. When I use anamorphic lenses, I don't crop the frame. When I use, um, uh, 65 mil, I don't crop the frame. So I felt I had to be true to the camera and the sensor I was using. Mm -hmm.